Preteens, it's Miss Leah. I know that you guys miss seeing my face just as much as I miss seeing yours, so you're welcome for this. Just wanted to touch base with you guys. I know that things look completely different right now than what we're used to, but I have no doubt that before long, we're gonna be back in our preteen department meeting face to face. I have faith in that and I hope that you do too. But in the meantime, we want to make sure that you guys are still growing in your relationship with God. You know, just like you're spending time working on your AMI packets or e-learning or however it is that your school's handling that so that you can stay on track with your schoolwork, we want to make sure that you're doing the same thing with the Word of God. So today I want to bring you a lesson about a prophet named Hosea. Now, this is the, one of the times that I'm going to say that it's okay for you to have your phone out during the lesson, so take full advantage of that if you'd like. <laughs> However, I do hope that you have your physical Bible there with you, and if you do, I'm going to ask you to turn to the book of Hosea, and today we're going to read from chapter 3. Now, as I said, Hosea was a prophet, and so basically his job was to travel around and warn God's people that they needed to turn from their sinful ways they needed to stop worshiping false idols, and they needed to turn back to God. Now, at this time, the kingdom was split into two. There was the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah, and Hosea was a prophet in the northern kingdom. So, he spent his time over 40 years. Can you imagine doing something for that long? But he stayed committed because he knew that God was the one true God, and he knew that God loved his people. God had proven that time and time again. He had freed them from bondage in Egypt. He had watched over them while they wandered the desert. He had provided manna for them to eat. He had sent Moses, and Moses parted the Red Sea to save them from their enemies. But despite God doing all of these miraculous things, for some reason the Israelites just couldn't get it right. They would all slowly but surely turn their backs on God and turn back to the ways of the world. So Hosea spent his time trying to, to get through to them and get them to turn back to God. So God decided to use Hosea in a very unconventional way because, you know, a lot of times God does that. He allows his people to go through these crazy circumstances, but he does that all for his glory because he knows that people are going to look back on that and say, you know, there's no way that could have happened. There's no way that would have been possible if it wasn't for the love of God, if it wasn't for his power. So God tells Hosea, look, there's this woman and I want you to marry her. She's going to have children by other men. She's not going to love you. She's not going to be faithful to you. But I want you to take her and marry her and love her anyway. Love her like I love the Israelites. So Hosea did just that. He found this woman named Gomer, and he married her. And just like God had told him, she didn't love him. She wasn't faithful to him. As a matter of fact, she often ran away from home. And on this one instance, she ran away from home, and she was actually bought by someone. And God came to Hosea, and he said, Hosea, I want you to go and get your wife. It doesn't matter what it costs you. Go and get her and bring her home to you. And Hosea did that. So if you will, look with me in the book of Hosea, chapter 3, and I'm going to read verse 1. It says, The Lord said to me, Go show your love to your wife again, though she is loved by another man and an adulteress. Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. So you see, God used Hosea. He gave his, he put his love in Hosea's heart so that Hosea could love Gomer, a woman who did not love him, a woman who was not faithful to him. But Hosea loved her despite all of that, just like God loves us despite everything that we do, just like God loved the Israelites despite everything they did. I hope you know that, guys. I hope you know that God loves you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter if you and your siblings got into an argument yesterday and drove your mom insane. It doesn't matter if you've 
cheated on a test before. It doesn't matter if you've spoken badly about someone before. Those are all sins, and God is not happy with our sins, and he wants us to repent of those and turn back to him. But God still loves us regardless of those sins. I hope that you guys are enjoying your time off. I hope that you stay tuned because we are going to have more lessons coming up. And I hope you know that I love you and that God loves you. See you guys soon.